In our regional wrap up, we're going to start in New Jersey. That's where former Port Authority appointee David Wildstein reportedly set to plead guilty to federal charges for his role in Bridgegate. Now, he could appear in court as early as tomorrow. Wildstein, as you may remember, was an ally of Governor Christie, or at least at one point, and he would be the first person nailed by prosecutors. Sources telling Bloomberg he appears to be cooperating with the feds. Wildstein, he was the guy who received the now infamous email from Governor Christie's Deputy Chief of Staff, Bridget Kelly, that said, time for some traffic problems in Fort Lee. Wildstein responded by saying, got it. Christie, he has been denying any knowledge of the lane closures, but the question is, um, where will this go from here? And we were talking about it in the break. Give the viewers um, uh, how the process works in terms of cooperation, indictments, and the sequence. Well, what I've heard about ah, that yes. is that <laughs> to the extent you're going to uh, cooperate, you do so before indictment which looks like what's happening yeah. here. Um, the, um, I, I just don't believe that anyone in the Christie camp was stupid enough to say, hold on a second, before you put the traffic cones up, let me check with Chris just to be sure. Uh, so uh, as to what cooperation means, it would surprise me if cooperation means that delivering Christie on a plate. That being said, the answer to your question is this does not help Chris Christie. It's going to continue to focus attention on what looks like that same tough guy in your face, do it my way or I'll punish you attitude that voters have sensed about him anyway. Um, th this, this is... Mm. It's I mean, water I mean, torture. It just drip, drip, drip on him. I mean... I, I think Richard makes a good point in that I don't know what David Wildstein... Obviously, we, none of us know what David Wildstein knows, but just from what we know of his position, I don't know what he knows about Chris Christie. He might be able to say, yeah, with that at atmosphere but in the governor's office, there's no way that he didn't know. But I don't think he He was he such knows a good point. friend of Chris Christie's yeah. in high school. Well, I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> no, but he Andrew, owned it. Yes, uh, just owned well, it. let me get into that. But my only point is the feds would have no interest in, in creating an arrangement where they were cooperating unless they thought he had information that would be... Uh, beneficial to the investigation Certainly. that would widen it if this was not a singular instance. If or there if was a pattern here where the administration uh, dealt with Bill, um, the Port Authority in terms of other political uh, cooperations, or maybe there was cooperation also, not just from the New Jersey side, but from the New York side in, co in coordinating who knew what and when about the closures before that infamous press conference. Yeah, so it, it can go anywhere. I mean, it, can, it really it, it, it can go anywhere. And I think we have to see how it plays out. My, my question is, how many federal investigators are there? I mean, <laughs> I mean there are so many investigations going on between New York and New Jersey and right now. If they build by the it's hour, so there'd be a big number here with everything that's number. going on. Hey, you know, the one thing, Dom, that people remember how the soap opera played out. First, uh, uh, the governor, uh, Christie, you know, making jokes about the cones and everything else. Um, then that press conference where he did a quasi mea culpa, um, but then at the same end disowned Waldstein that the so-called one-time friend, he was a loser in high school and I was the jock and he was the geek kind of thing. Um, he didn't leave a lot of room here where Waldstein would be incentivized to bite his tongue. I mean, he scorched the earth in that press conference. He sure did. Timing is everything in politics, as you know, almost as important as uh, as perception. And this could not come, what was your word? You said this is water torture. Yeah. I agree, this couldn't come, the man on your screen, this couldn't come for, at a worse time for him. And we all speculated it was either going to be Bridget Kelly or Wildstein that perhaps took a deal. The feds are not, they're, they're very, very smart. If Wildstein is copying a deal, you better believe it's something good and it perhaps is leading back to Christie. I don't know if it's criminal, but it's surely going to be enough to make sure that he doesn't run for president. This has got to be one of the stupidest things I've yeah. ever seen in government. Just self I mean, and, and Chris Christie did a terrific job at that news conference and, and his staff did a great job. I mean, he went there and he stayed and took the questions. He dealt with it from a PR perspective, I think, as well as you possibly mm -hmm. could. But it just keeps coming. It well, just keeps coming. It's not stupidity. It's accumulated arrogance. Yeah. And th those behavioral, like those like behavioral traits you saw in him that made him, you make you go, oh, or what in the end yields these kinds of mistakes. This, these are not stupid people. Well, let me go from New Jersey to New York and Albany specifically, where one of the 
backbones of ethics reform now under attack. Labor unions are pushing lawmakers to change the pension forfeiture clause. So it'll apply only to elected officials convicted of corruption, not all officials. And the state Senate already passed it, but the Democrat-led assembly is now being pushed to tweak it. They say it's just language here that's being uh, amended, Richard, but at the same end, why should anybody, if convicted of basically abuse here, uh, abuse of the public trust in this case, or corruption, why should they be eligible for a pension? Because that terrible, awful, punishable mistake should not necessarily cause someone to be impoverished for the rest of their lives. That's the, that's the answer to that. There are appropriate penalties, but for right now, people are piling on. Now, it's worth thinking about as a, as a uh, deterrent, but as, you know, your guy spends 20 years as a civil servant or as an elected official, serves honorably and well, makes a terrible, stupid, knowing, criminal mistake, and loses his pension? Okay. Well, I, well, let me play devil's advocate. I understand his point, Andrew, but why not the argument that, listen, you're not asked, this isn't somebody who's being hired to be a street sweeper. This is a person that's being put in office, largely either elected office or appointed office, whatever the case may be, um, to basically be the vanguard of the public trust. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that's not only implied but stated is they're taking an oath here to uphold that public trust. If they violate it knowingly, why should they on the ben I'll even use your argument, earned monies that they did through a pension arrangement, why should they still be eligible? I don't really have a good answer for that. I mean, a, cops who are eligible for pensions can lose their pensions if they're if they're abusing their office and if they're abusing their authority. I, I frankly don't really see the downside of it. In your example, Richard, somebody who's worked honorably and worked well for 20 years should have known better. They and, should have, and they should and, go to jail and, top, but, but, and be punished. But maybe, this will, act, but maybe this will act as an incentive for them not to not to uh, make uh, that corrupt act the in the first place. The the no, I don't believe in the death penalty, but this isn't the death penalty. This is stopping you from taking state money, taxpayer money, after you've already defrauded all, the taxpayers. a good portion of that money is money contributed by the uh, pensioner. This is not just public money. Look, I, this happens to me all the time because you do it to me. It's your fault. I am not defending criminal behavior by public people. Then say they should be get convicted, right. sent to jail, and punished. I'm not saying you say that you say that you're going to get paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you agree. Who do you agree with? I'm I, I, I'm for stripping the pension, but I do listen to what Richard Richard says. You know, and it depends on what the crime is. If someone gets nailed for 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 uh, for faking a per diem, which is a small payment, does that lose them their pension? If someone if someone says, okay, I had dinner at Howard Johnson's, and I'm going to get the per diem on that. Well, it, it, it depends what the level is, but in general, I think that I think you know the the, the populist answer is people are so tired of what's happening. And Albany I just showed a graphic: almost two thirds of New Yorkers believe that even after the ethics reform, it won't make a spit of difference, Sen um, and it won't curb corruption. Sen sentencing criminals is not a matter of polls. We have some crimes that are awful. We execute people. We have some crimes that are awful, we send them to jail for life. We have some crimes that are awful, we send them to jail, jail for 20 years. There is a place for forgiveness and for a life after should you've they, paid your debt. Should they get their debt. pension while they're sitting in jail? You should, said you said let them go to jail, that's uh, the penalty. Am I, am I negotiating No, I'm just here? saying, if, I mean, how far does this theory go? <laughs> if, you, if you think that sending to jail is fine, but the pension, that's a step it, too it far. Go, should they be I'll able to, tell you, I'll tell you how they far to cash their, their pension checks so while they're sitting in jail? Before you rush into to say we're going to get those guys, uh, justice must be tempered with mercy. And people ought to be able to live lives even after they've paid their debt to society. That's true for uh, a kid who steals a car, and it's true for a guy like Bill Scarborough who is going to be criminally convicted for padding his expense accounts. It's not to say the offense is okay. Right. To say I have some maybe proportionality. Yes, sir. What are you going to do? You are something else. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tease you, Richard, because after that spinning here, I'm a little dizzy. Now, earlier today, Richard, the good Richard Brodsky, the honorable Richard Brodsky, he hosted an event at NYU called Improving Albany. So he does care. It's a path to greater effectiveness. It's talking about not only the problems, but what to do about it. And um, it was apparently, even Andrew admitted, a really interesting program. He covered it tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to show you more about it. And also, 
Bill and Richard, along with Andrew, will be on this weekend. Newsbreakers, Fios One News, Lower Hudson Valley. Um, Andrew's a special guest, Catherine Borgia, the Meyer leader of the Westchester Board of Legislators. Other than these two. Yes, other than these Why two. Oh, so my God. I hump them, and it's here so I come. Good. I'm pu promoting them, and where does he go? All right, I'm I like the, this distance there. Coming up next, things have calmed down. A bit now in Baltimore, but the images of the looting and the fires from Monday night, and we've seen in other American cities in the last year or so, have seared in American memories. And it is also reminding some people of some darker days in the not too distant past of America. Are we getting closer to those times, or are these just isolated incidents? We'll be right back. <laughs>